Hey everyone, this is the artist review of the iPad 9 2021. So this year, once again, Apple has incremental updates for the iPad. The main thing here is they are now using the A13 Bionic chip and the base storage starts from 64 gigabytes instead of 32. And they have this ultra wide front camera with center stage technology. The amount of RAM is still three gigabytes. So if you happen to be using the earlier iPads, um, there is absolutely no reason to upgrade. In fact, this design is the same from 2018. Yeah, it's a dated design, but it still looks all right. It still looks good. The power buttons here, and this is a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. The camera has no camera bump, so you can actually place this tablet completely flat on the table. The two volume buttons are here. This is quite a thin tablet. It's not as thin compared to the iPad mini, the Air or the Pro, but it's thin enough, slightly thinner compared to the Apple Pencil, which by the way is not included and sold separately. Here we have the speakers and that's the lightning port. The lightning port is also used for charging the first generation Apple Pencil and it looks like this when you are charging it. There is a front facing camera here and this is the home button with a fingerprint sensor in it. The bezels are quite thick on these two sides but I guess it gives you space to hold a tablet very comfortably. Build quality of this tablet is very solid as you would expect from Apple. The weight is 487 grams for the Wi-Fi model. This is slightly heavier compared to the iPad Air. And this is not a tablet I can hold for long periods of time like this with one hand on the side without any form of support. If I rest the tablet on the table, fine. But if I have to hold this for long periods of time, I would hold it like this, especially for drawing when I'm outdoors. The physical size of this tablet is slightly larger compared with this A5 size sketchbook that I have. The 10.2 inch display is almost the same size as this sketchbook. So this screen size is the minimum size I would work with. I don't use tablets that are smaller than 10 inches. So this is actually quite a good size for drawing. It's a very comfortable size to work with. Just for comparison purposes, this is the iPad mini 2021. You can see this tablet is smaller than the A5 sketchbook and noticeably smaller compared to the iPad. By the way, my artist review for this is already up. And if you want to watch it, just check out the link that I have for you in the video description below. So everything about the iPad mini is small. Um, I find this size difficult to work with because the visuals are small, the icons, the UI elements, all those are very small. The fonts are very difficult for me to read. And when you open drawing apps, um, all those buttons are slightly smaller, sometimes a bit difficult to tap on accurately. All the palettes are also smaller. Um, I don't work with displays that are smaller than 10 inches because it feels very restrictive drawing on such a small display. So 10.2 inch is actually quite a good size. The resolution is 2160 by 1620. So the visuals are quite sharp with no noticeable pixelation. Colors on this display look great. There is also this True Tone technology where it takes into account the ambient lighting to make the white on the tablet look like paper white. I find that to be quite pleasing. And brightness is up to 500 nits, so you can definitely use this outdoors if you want to. This is how the reflection looks. If you apply a matte screen protector over this, um, this reflection will all be diffused into just this white haze and it can be quite distracting which is why nowadays I don't actually use a matte screen protector on my iPads I just draw with the glass I just use my iPads with a flip cover to protect the front I just try to get used to drawing with the Apple Pencil on glass this display is not laminated so there is a gap between the pen tip 
and the line on the LCD. When drawing, the gap is really not that noticeable. There is no noticeable parallax or misalignment. Apple Pencil tracking is very accurate. The line always appears directly beneath the pen tip. The refresh rate of this tablet is 60 Hz, so there is going to be some latency in the form of the line trying to catch up with the pen tip while you are drawing. But this is only noticeable when you are really testing for it, when you are drawing long sweeping lines like this. When you are drawing with normal speed, latency is not noticeable. And overall, the drawing experience is very good. This is the Apple Pencil first generation. You cannot use the second generation Apple Pencil with the iPad because there is no way to charge or to pair with the iPad. The second generation has the charging connector at the back. The cap is held on with magnets. Don't lose the cap. The Apple Pencil tip is replaceable. So if it's worn out, you can replace this very easily. I've been using my other Apple Pencil for a few years and the pen tip can last for quite a long time. If you are using the Apple Pencil on a matte screen protector, this is going to wear out faster. But since this is replaceable, uh, this pen tip wearing out is not really an issue. If I remember correctly, Apple is selling replacement tips for $20 for a pack of four. The Apple Pencil is a very sensitive and accurate stylus. This is probably one of the best, if not the best, stylus for a portable tablet. I'm not sure how many levels of pressure the Apple Pencil supports, but it's very sensitive. You can draw thin and thick lines very easily just by adjusting your pressure so this is how thick this line or this brush really is you can choose a thick brush but you can still draw with thin lines just by adjusting your pressure so this is actually very convenient and as mentioned earlier, there is no noticeable latency issues unless you are drawing like really quick. Apple Pencil also has tilt support, so you can use Apple Pencil on the side for shading. Apple Pencil is able to maintain consistent pressure quite accurately. So you can draw lines with consistent waves very easily just by maintaining your pressure. Apple Pencil performance is very predictable and reliable, very consistent. The lines always come out exactly the way I expect them to. One important thing to note about the Apple Pencil is the design is cylindrical. So when you put this on a table, make sure you put it in such a way that there is no way for this to roll off the table. My Apple Pencil has rolled off the table numerous times and sometimes when it rolls off the table and hit the ground with the pen tip, the pen tip would chip off. I don't know how long the battery life is for the Apple Pencil. Anyway, it takes 15 minutes for the Apple Pencil to get a full charge. And battery life has never been a problem. You can use the Apple Pencil for a few hours with um, each full charge. After testing the Apple iPad mini and coming back to using this larger iPad, it feels so much better. You can rest your palm on the display and still have a good portion of canvas space to work with. Palm rejection with Procreate is flawless because with this app, you can actually choose to have the app accept only pen input for drawing. So there is no way for you to introduce any stray strokes. You can rest your palm on the display while you draw. The Apple Pencil is quite smooth on the glass display. There is slightly more resistance compared to the iPad mini. Uh, this is just relatively speaking. If you want more control, you can get a matte screen protector.
after um, but that is obviously going to affect the image quality the Apple Pencil tip should not scratch the glass I mean this is plastic against glass so it shouldn't scratch the glass initial activation force of the Apple Pencil is very low as long as the pen tip is in contact with the glass you can get a line even if you don't apply any pressure so that's how sensitive the Apple Pencil really is there is no jitter when drawing diagonal lines slowly Apple Pencil is just very accurate at the time of making this video the total number of layers you can get with A4 300 dpi is 26 the number of layers you can create here is on par with other iPads with 3 gigs of memory tilt sensitivity works really well there are actually different degrees of support so you can tilt the Apple Pencil vertically or horizontally to get strokes with different widths so I usually use this to cover large areas and if I need to paint or color in small areas I can use the pen tip like this the brush that I am using uh, with Procreate is called tinder box and this is a really nice brush because when you are coloring flat color like this the color is actually not flat if you zoom in close you can actually see some texture within the color shape so i really love this brush general performance of this ipad is very smooth very snappy there is no lag with for the drawing apps i have tested even with just 3 gigs of RAM I wish there could be more RAM but um, it actually doesn't affect the user experience so 3 gigs in this case uh, with this iPad is still sufficient although you are paying like 300 over dollars um, you probably would want more RAM but that's Apple they will want to give you all these small incremental updates each year so everything is really smooth um, when it comes to zooming in and out even for high resolution files it's very quick very smooth very snappy the actual storage space you get with 64 gigs of storage is actually 59.3 gigs iPad OS will take up 13 gigs so um, you are going to be left with just less than 47 gigs of actual usable storage depending on how often you create art um, 64 may or may not be enough so if you look at your current workflow and you are someone who mix art you do sketches every day and your art is very complicated very detailed has a lot of details uh, layers uh, the file size is very big then chances are you may want to upgrade to more storage but if it's just uh, if you're just going to use your ipad for occasional sketching then 64 gigs may be fine maybe sufficient so can this entry level ipad be used to create professional art definitely yes so you don't actually need to um, buy the much more expensive ipad air which is priced at 599 us dollars that's almost two times the price of the base model ipad you do get more features with the iPad Air that's for sure but it's also significantly more expensive so um, in terms of value for money I would say the base model iPad provides more value for money simply because it's much cheaper
you can produce very beautiful tapered strokes very easily with the Apple Pencil this is only possible because of the low initial activation force and also the pressure sensitivity how good pressure sensitivity really is because the display is not laminated uh, when you are tapping on the display like what I'm doing right now there is this hollow sounding uh, sound that it makes so I used only 8 layers for this very simple sketch and the file size is 45 megabytes let's take a look at other drawing apps there is a huge variety of very capable drawing apps available from the Apple App Store Procreate is the most popular personally I prefer to use Concepts there is also Clip Studio Paint where the functionality is exactly the same as the desktop version Midibank Paint Pro is the competitor to Clip Studio Paint so the huge variety of high quality drawing apps is actually one of the main selling points of getting an iPad there are so many to choose from you can just choose an app that suits your workflow I like to use concepts because I like to create very stylized art like this and this is a vector illustration app so you can actually zoom in all the way and all the lines will still be very sharp and this app also features an infinite canvas so you can actually draw on and on and you will not run out of canvas space which is really cool battery life is good you can get around 8 hours with high brightness settings is the iPad worth the money? well the base model is 329 US dollars and Apple Pencil is another hundred dollars so we are looking at 429 dollars and you only get 64 gigs of storage if you want more storage that's an extra 150 dollars I do feel like it's worth the money simply because the overall drawing experience is very good Apple Pencil drawing performance is excellent so iPads uh, for digital drawing um, they do provide really good drawing experience so if you look at it that way it is worth the money as for whether this can last uh, because it only has 3 gigs of RAM um, the thing is Apple has been putting out these iPads with 3 gigs of RAM and they are probably going to do so for a very long time so chances are it's going to last for many years with iPad OS updates and Apple do optimize their iPad OS quite well so the overall drawing experience or user experience is always very smooth so yeah this can probably last you can use this until it physically breaks down do subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can get notified when the Xiaomi Pad 5 artist review is out that tablet has better specifications, a much better display it also has stylus support and Xiaomi is selling that tablet at the same price as the iPad so if you are interested to find out how good that tablet is when it comes to drawing subscribe and hit the bell notification icon